This week on Ninja Lab, we start the new decade by looking at the results of Austin Ninjas, Westchester Ninja Warriors, Life Force Ninja, and Ninja Logic. Hello, my name is William, and I'm playing catch up. Let's look at the results for Westchester Ninja Warrior. Westchester was a challenging course full of ninja colors throughout the entire thing, and unfortunately, no females qualified for this top three. So in the adult male division, in third place was Dylan Testa, who was able to get past the pipe slider and the very difficult just roll with it, which was a real roadblock for our competitors. But unfortunately on the stair hopper, he immediately fell off the obstacle and his run ended at the fifth obstacle. But the good news is that he qualifies for a world championship in February. In second place is Colin Spade. Colin was able to complete the stair hopper, but then he had to go head to head with the canes, which he was able to complete, but when he had to take on the nunchuck wall, he unfortunately slipped and went down on the course. But his second place finish allows him to qualify for our world championship in February, and he gets 9 points to boot. Unfortunately, there was no finishers on the course, but the man who was able to go further than anyone else was Connor Claffey. Connor was able to get two obstacles further than Colin by flawlessly completing the nunchuck wall and get through the birdhouse pegs, but when he reached the double ring hooks, he unfortunately had trouble dismounting the first set of hooks, but when he finally did, he was unable to make the transfer and went down on the obstacle, but the good news is, that's good enough for first place and 10 points on his season total. Remember, go to nationalninja.com for the full schedule of upcoming qualifying events. Also, if you want an NNL shirt, check out our spread shirt page, link in the description down below. Now, let's look at the results for Ninja Logic. For the adult female division, in third place was Whitney Laventer. Whitney was looking very solid on the first two obstacles, completing them very quickly, but when she was on the ring swing rock wall, her dismount was very questionable, and even though she was allowed to continue through the course, upon review, it was determined that her foot did unfortunately land out of bounds, so she was disqualified and credited as only completing two obstacles. But the good news is that she is moving on with eight more points towards her total because she still finished in third place. In second place was Katie Craven. Katie was able to definitively clear the ring swing rock wall. However, on the next obstacle, the flying squirrel, she completely whiffed the transfer and was eliminated on that obstacle. So she was able to make it one obstacle further, but good enough for second place. And in first place was Krista Caldwell. Krista also had a solid dismount on the ring swing rock wall. However, unlike Katie, she was able to reach the cargo net from the flying squirrel. This is key because this counted as a obstacle completion. So even though when she reached the cargo net, her momentum did not allow her to hold on to the obstacle, she still was able to go far enough to be considered first place. Unfortunately, she did have a pretty nasty spill from the cargo net, but fortunately there's a pretty thick pad underneath her, so she was okay from the landing. This earns her 10 more points. In third place for the adult male division was Judas Lucadario. The good news is that Judas was able to complete the transfer on the Flying Squirrel and hold on to the cargo net, and was able to reach the warped wall in a relatively fast speed. It's a good thing too because when he got to the hook bridge, he unfortunately spent over a minute on the obstacle just getting hung up and unfortunately his time simply ex expired on him. But the good news is that that is good enough for third place, which gets him 8 more points on his season total. 
In second place was Dan Galazinski, who qualifies for the World Championship with this run. Dan had a very scary slip on the very first obstacle, but he was able to recover and continue through the course. Unfortunately for Dan, his very methodical pace was unfortunately too slow for a course with a very tight time limit. And even though he was able to complete Fruit Loops, the obstacle that Judas was unable to complete, he timed out on the second to last obstacle, right before he dismounted. This might have cost him a first place finish. And in first place was Aaron Lucas. Despite only being the third runner for that day, Aaron was able to get through the course at a blistering fast pace and completed the Fruit Loops a full 40 seconds faster than Dan did. Unfortunately for him, he miscalculated his dismount and just missed on the second to last obstacle, resulting in a disqualification due to not completely passing the line. Fortunately for him, no one was able to complete the second to last obstacle, so his costly mistake did not actually cost him as he still finished in first place. It's now time for the comment question of the week. If you have the ability to put one obstacle on the course for our upcoming world championship, what would you choose? Now it could be any obstacle on any stage. Stage 1, Stage 2, Stage 3. I'm going to let you choose, give you free reigns of choice. Leave your answers in the comments below. Extra points for creativity. Now, I do have some bad news. Due to some outside issues, we don't have the f footage for Life Fourth Ninja. But I can tell you some of the results. Uh, for the adult female division, in first place was Hannah Schultz, who completed the bouncy steps. And for the adult male division, in third place was uh, Capo Gason, who completed uh, the Pipe Shuffler to Bird Boxes. And in second place was Ryan Chow, who finished the whole thing in 8 minutes and 15.96 seconds. And in first place was Michael Chow, who finished the whole course a little bit faster in 8 minutes and 1.36 seconds. I don't know the relation between the two Chows. I'm going to guess they're brothers, but I'm not sure. If I'm wrong, I apologize. But I can tell you that all three men that I just listed qualified for our National Ninja League World Championship this upcoming February. Now, let's finish up with the results of Austin Ninjas. For the adult female division, in third place was Jessica McGill. Jessica was able to get through some tough laches as well as the challenging ring slider, which she had a little trouble with, but was able to complete it. But unfortunately, the spider flip was her real heartbreaker as she was unable to complete the obstacle and was taken down at that point of the course. But the good news is she qualified for the World Championship in February. In second place was Harley Cavazos. Holly was able to complete the spider flip, unlike Jessica, but unfortunately for her, she spent so much time on the obstacle that she basically had no time at all after she, com she completed it. Now, the good news for her is that she was still able to complete the next obstacle, the rings on the rope, just before time expired. She completed the obstacle in 2 minutes and 42.94 seconds. The course itself only had a time limit of 2 minutes and 45 seconds. So it was smart of her to complete the obstacle before time ran out in order to get that extra point. Unfortunately for Holly, it was not good enough to beat China Hart, who was able to complete the rings on the rope almost 50 seconds faster than her in a time of 1 minute and 55.2 seconds. China qualifies for the world championship with this run, and was able to actually attempt the cliffhanger that followed the rings, but unfortunately for her, she was only able to get about two-thirds of the way through the obstacle before one of the transfers tripped her up and she lost her grip on the course.
For the adult male division, the top three were fighting to see who can complete the course in the fastest time. In third place was Abel Gonzalez, who proved that he truly was able by completing the entire course in 2 minutes and 34.75 seconds. Hilariously, when he dismounted the final obstacle, Abel originally missed hitting the button. But the good news is that that mistake did not actually cost him second or first place. Also good for Abel is the fact that this performance allows him to qualify for the National Ninja League World Championship in February. In second place was former final stage competitor Daniel Gill. The Kingdom Ninja proved that he is one of the best of all time by finishing the course in a time of 2 minutes and 1.06 seconds. It's really hard to commentate anything about Daniel's run because he was just so solid and so fast through the entire course. All three of our finishers just look good through the entire thing. And the only man who was able to defeat Daniel Gill was Matthew Day, who finished in first place with a time of 1 minute and 50.83 seconds. Matthew was able to use as many skips as he could find and barreled through the rest of the obstacles in order to speed through the course and finish with 10 extra seconds on Daniel. Matthew truly was having the best day ever by getting a small amount of revenge for his power tower loss against Daniel last year. If you want to see full runs from this season, click here. Also, make sure you subscribe to know when new videos go live. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you later.